everyone and welcome to the webinar with Dr. Kopo. Uh, Dr. Kopo spent most of his time with precious metals. After joining Harrius, which is one of the largest companies focusing on these precious metal technology, he established an alloy, alloy production line in Hong Kong to supply the alloy products for watches and, and jewelry. He then made his company one of the leading suppliers of this alloy in the globe. In recent years, he has focused a lot in product development and has got several patents and alloys for special applications. We at Gem Atlas are glad to have Dr. Kopo with us today talking about hardening of jewelry alloys. Gem Atlas is an online B2B networking platform for the diamonds, gems, and jewelry industry. We help you connect with businesses and professionals around the world. You can easily start generating new business leads through our platform. There will be a Q&A button below, so please feel free to put in your questions and have them answered at the end of the presentation. Over to you, Dr. Koko. Good afternoon. So uh, today, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk with you about the uh, hardening of alloys. So let me uh, share my screen with you. The hardening of jewelry alloy is always a talking point for most of the jewelry. Uh, we sometimes we try to uh, 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 make the alloy harder, or we asking for some alloy with a softer uh, texture. But uh, it's always a a a, a continuous uh, uh, discussion about this. So today I would like to take a, a more systematic approach to explain the hardness and what factors for the alloy to affect the uh, hardness. And we can utilize this uh, principle to, to uh, harden our alloys. So first of all, what is hardness? Actually, hardness, I can say, is a kind of a very subjective uh, description for a matter. So as long as the metal is uh, difficult to or resist the, the deformation, we describe it as hard, but uh, how we can call it hard? Uh, here is some example. We have uh, some very typical example like stone, diamond, stainless steel, or some uh, uh, like uh, the osmium showing there, which is a kind of a PG uh, precious group metal, which reported to have even higher hardness than diamond. So this is something very typical hard substance. But we also have uh, some soft substance like the pani, which I like the most in India. Every time I go to India, I, I, I have a lot of uh, pani. And also uh, like sponge for like gold, which to some people they say, oh, it's a uh, hard. But some people say, oh, it's soft. This is also I like, but, but uh, today I would like to discuss how we can convert this uh, gold into a hardened, hardened gold alloy. So, when we talk about hardness, there are also a lot of people talk about, okay, how about the, spray, uh, the tensile strength? But when we look into the hardness and when we look into the tensile strength, actually there are two kinds of measurement, but they are more or less reflecting the similar property, but they have a, a little bit difference, which I will go into details later on. But when we mention about hardness, there are always people saying, uh, more hardness. More hardness, I'm not sure if uh, how many of you noticed that. This is a kind of a hardness measurement referred to the common material, namely the, the, the uh, minerals. Like the hardest one is diamond and the, um, the softer one is uh, tech. But this uh, scale actually is not really suitable for our application because the uh, hardness scale is not linear. It's just give you a very uh, common understanding or uh, some, some, some realization of uh, the hardness of uh, the material. So normally, if you want to be precise, try to avoid to measure the hardness by this more hardness because it won't tell you uh, too, it won't be too informative. But of course, it can give you a, a more easy understanding, but this is not applicable for the jewelry industry. We are looking for something with a more scientific for, for uh, uh, telling the hardness of your material. So 
Here is a table which showing the difference between the uh, the hardness and tensile strength. Oh, sorry. So if you can see, the hardness actually is a, a measurement of the resistance to being deformed or to being uh, penetrated. And uh, also, uh, the principle is very simple. We, met, we will put an indentation of an object. Mostly, it's a kind of a diamond. And then we will just uh, put this diamond into on the surface and press. And then you will have a mark. And, and then you can, by, by uh, measuring the, the mark, then you, you know the hardness. And the hardness, somehow, it can reflect also the tensile strength most of the cases. And normally this hardness will express in its uh, uh, scale, like HV or HB or sometimes HR. And this method uh, is much easier than per, uh, to perform because you just need a flat surface to measure the hardness. In conscious, when you measure the tensile strength, uh, actually the tensile strength is to measure the ability to resist the being torsion before fracture. So you will, you will uh, measure by teasing or the, the, uh, the, to pull the, uh, the sample under an SO force until it broke. So the tensile strength, somehow it can give you more information on the mechanical property. It's not just showing how strong the alloy is. Somehow you can also measure the uh, ductility of the alloy and also some additional uh, information like the yield strength when the alloy will start the elastic deformation, something like that. So it's, it can give you more information, but somehow the hardness can uh, reflect this uh, uh, tensile strength uh, to a certain extent. For tensile strength, it is uh, expressed normally in the unit of uh, pressure that is way over area. Like in uh, most of the cases for us, it's our, our uh, kilo Newton per millimeter, uh, square millimeter. But when we perform the tensile strength test, normally we need to have the sample with special dimension to, in order to give a more reproducible uh, result. So this is the reason why uh, we will measure the tensile strength, but normally it will be easy for us to, to uh, talk about the hardness by the uh, hardness measurement. So uh, this one is uh, the hardness measurement, uh, what we call weakest hardness. Actually, the principle is very simple. We have a, a, a diamond here, and then we will apply the loading. So with the, the loading hit to the uh, object, then it will penetrate into the object. The harder the one, then the, the, uh, the diamond can penetrate a uh, uh, lot so deep. Uh, anyway, it will end up with a square mark. By measuring the diagonal, the length of the diagonal, and then we uh, put it in this uh, expression, mathematical expression, then we can calculate the uh, hardness. So normally the longer the di diagonal, that means the diamond can penetrate deeper. That means the item is uh, softer. So normally this HV, the higher the, the weeding, the higher the hardness. So actually what you need is just a flat surface of around few millimeter. Then we are able to measure the hardness. So it's very convenient and very easy to apply to most of the jewelry alloy. So here is the table showing the hardness of most of common jewelry alloy. Like the fine gold and fine silver, it has the hardness of all, uh, around just 20 something HP. And for the jewelry alloy, like the yellow gold, uh, white gold, it will be in the range of around 100 to 200. Like especially for the nickel white alloy, it can have uh, the hardness up to more than 200. Uh, for the uh, like the sterling silver, you will have uh, the hardness a little bit low, around 60 to 80, something like that. But when you're comparing the hardness with uh, the stainless steel, uh, this uh, 316L uh, stainless steel is a kind of a surgery steel, which is also used commonly for the uh, stainless steel uh, jewelry. It has the hardness of over 400. So it has three times more uh, uh, hard 
than the uh, normal uh, jewelry alloy. So we talk about the hardness. Actually, they are pros and cons with a uh, high hardness. So normally with high hardness, it's good because it has more resistance towards the deformation and also it's more scratch resistance. And normally when you do the stone setting, the, it can hold the uh, gems more tightly. Uh, also with a high, the, the hard, hard, higher hardness, the jewelry metal will be easier to polish and you will end up with less polishing loss. But the advantages, uh, if the alloy is too hard, then sometimes when you set want to set the stone, there are more difficulties because the, the prong will bounce back, something like that. And then also you need to have a more power, more effort in machining purpose as the, the, if the alloy is too hard. And also uh, if you're working with the harder uh, uh, alloy, the machinery may aging faster because of this heavy duty. So they have uh, pros and coins for uh, alloy with high hardness. But in general, we normally looking for the alloy with uh, better hardness than lower hardness. This is uh, uh, the general trend. Okay, but how we can increase the metal hardness? This is uh, very important. So. Right now we have around four methods which can increase uh, the metal hardness. They are the grain boundary uh, strengthening, co-working, solid solution strengthening, and age hardening. Especially for age hardening, which we will talk about this in detail uh, afterwards. So for grain boundary strengthening, uh, normally, the metal is in form of a micro, uh, the, the mult, mult, uh, microcrystalline, a uh, multi microcrystalline. So, uh, before we talk about the, 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 the uh, deformation, we know that actually in the uh, metal, the crystal lattice, they have a lot of uh, imperfection inside that allow the uh, metal to move, what we call the dislocation. Whenever the alloy can, uh, the, can dislocate along the uh, lattice plate, that means the easier they can dislocate, that means it's easier to deform. If we are able to stop or to make the dislocation more difficult, then the hardness will increase. This is the, the very important concept in, in, keep in mind. Uh, so what we want to do is to stop this dislocation or make the barrier for this dislocation. So um, when we have a small grains, the small grains normally in within the grains, you the uh, alloy can slice along the crystal plate, so it can move wherever they like along the plate, but it will be stopped by the grain boundary. It will become a barrier like this diagram because they are oriented in different directions. So if we want to move here, but because of uh, the, the uh, dislocation here, uh, the, 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 the different orientation here, it stops the, the, the uh, movement. So it, it makes some barrier for the uh, dislocation. So it, become, it, it can only dislocate in a very short distance. So in another word, it increases the hardness. But the amount of uh, hardness it can increase is uh, normally um, not very uh, 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 substantial, but somehow it can increase some level. So normally if the alloy have a smaller grain by adding the uh, grain refiner, you can see the hardness is a bit better than those alloy with uh, uh, bigger grains. Another one is the co-working, which I think a lot of you already familiar with. Uh, the um, principle is very, very uh, simple. So when you apply the stress, then like this diagram, as I mentioned in the lattice crystal, they have a lot of uh, imperfection like uh, the empty space. Sometimes the atoms are missing in the lattice. So it allows you to, when you uh, press the alloy or press the metal, this uh, kind of disinfection, uh, this um, uh, 
imperfect imperfection can move. So the more you, you press, they will be concentrated. And then the hardness will increase because you have a more and more difficulty to delocalize or to, to dislocate this imperfection. Until to this point, all the uh, uh, imperfection are moved away. Then the alloy will become very, very hard and it starts to break. And this is the reason why when you do the co-working, you cannot do it continuously. Until some point, it will start to crack because there is no other room for it to dislocate. It can only crack. Okay. So uh, normally we will do the annealing to uh, let the alloy to recrystallize itself, to let the atom to, to have some energy to arrange themselves to form the crystal again. This process is called recrystallization. But if we want to keep the hardness of the alloy, uh, normally, uh, you can do the co-working to, to make it hard. But uh, uh, if you uh, do it that way, normally, because after the, the co-working, the alloy, sometimes they are full of uh, stress. That means the atoms, they are not in their uh, 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 favor uh, energy level. They have a lot of what we call the residual energy inside, which can make the alloy easier to tarnish easier to react with the atmospheric, uh, 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 like the chlorine, the silver, and then it become uh, black in color. So normally, if we want to uh, uh, release this uh, stress, we can use a small, uh, a, a low heat, not the, the, the temperature as high as the annealing temperature, but somehow uh, like 50% or 40% of the original uh, annealing temperature, then you can help to release the stress. So the hardness of the alloy can be maintained, but uh, at the same time, the stress can be released somehow. So this is something that we can do to harden the alloy. But you may ask, okay, so if I have a casting item, which I cannot roll it down, how I can increase the hardness? Actually, we can also do some kind of uh, what we call the deformation on the surface. Like if you hammer, or tumble the, the uh, casting pieces on the surface. Then the surface will be deformed and it can also slightly increase the surface hardness of the item. Uh, this is very, uh, it can help substantially for some uh, alloy like the 24 or 22 carat by hammering it or tumble it with the tumbling pin, it can slightly harden the alloy because of this whole working effect. The third one actually is uh, the solid solution strengthening. So solid solution strengthening looks very technical, but in fact, this is uh, the, the way that we have been doing uh, the hardening for a long time. Uh, even when we go back to, to, to many years ago, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the history, people also add something inside to harden the gold. Maybe they don't know the reason, but they know by adding other metals into the gold, it can harden the gold. But what is the reason behind? Actually, um, by adding the, the uh, other alloys, the uh, other metals into the, the, the gold, uh, it will form some kind of uh, uh, solid solution. That is like the, you put the uh, salt in the water or sugar in the water. So it's a kind of solution. But since it's a solid, so we call it solid solution. So when you put this solute uh, element, uh, like if you uh, put the copper into the gold or carbon into the iron. So there are two kinds of uh, uh, displacement. One is called interstitial uh, displacement. That means the carbon will trap in between the lattice because it's so small. So once it's inside, so it stops the dislocation because it's blocked by the carbon atom. But in the gold alloy, normally we don't have this interstitial uh, uh, displacement because uh, 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 this, it doesn't work out in this way. So, but normally we can use this, uh, what we call the uh, substitutional uh, this, uh, replacement. So that means in the lattice, some of the metal are replaced with other, other atoms. Like uh, you may have uh, the atom smaller or bigger, 
So we would distort the uh, lattice structure. So then uh, once it's distorted, then the dislocation will become not so favor. Like if you put two paper together, if the paper is smooth, you can slide it very easily. But if you have uh, some other atoms, smaller one or bigger one, the effect is something like the uh, sandpaper. So you have uh, some, some rough surface. In this case, the, the, the sliding will become uh, not so easy. So, but how, why uh, some metal can make it more hard uh, uh, with harder, higher hardness, some is not so hard. Actually is related mostly to its uh, atomic size. So here is the table. You can see uh, the um, atomic, uh, uh, the, the uh, metallic radius, or, the, or you, can, you can look uh, into it as the size of the atoms. So like for the gold atom is around 1.44 Armstrong. So the more, the more difference, that means it will create more, more, uh, more distortion. That means the, 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 uh, it will be more in favor of the dislocation. So if you see the silver, it have more or less the same uh, size as the gold atom. So uh, the difference is zero degree. So you can experience normally when you add silver and you go, it doesn't increase too much the, the hardness. But if you look into this table, if you add copper or nickel, its size is much smaller than gold. The difference is up to 11% to, or to 14%. So you can see the hardness increase a lot. So normally when you add nickel into gold, the hardness increase very soon. But besides, you can also add other things like the indium, can also increase a lot. But normally, if you add in too much indium into the gold, you will end up with uh, some other issue. And that's why uh, we have to be careful how much we put in. And the more the uh, foreign metal that you put in, it can increase also the hardness. Like this one uh, is a kind of uh, different kind of uh, copper alloys, like the bronze and brass. You can see if you add the uh, more tin, uh, into the, the alloy, then the uh, hardness will shoot up very fast. Okay. And uh, the one uh, interesting thing is, uh, like this uh, f bot element, this is uh, the, the uh, kind of uh, wear of um, element. It has a very big difference in the, in the uh, atomic size. So if we are able to mix this with the gold, maybe we can be able to make some very hard gold all, all alloy with this. This is uh, interesting to know. But whether we can add all kinds of elements into the gold, this is a big question. Like you see from this um, periodic table, actually we have over 100 of elements available in, in the earth. But unfortunately, not all of this alloy, uh, all of this uh, element can be added to the gold. Like this, uh, for the group one or the, 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 um, this kind of uh, metals, they are very easy to oxidize or they have a very high melting point. So normally it's very difficult to mix them with the gold. Also, we have uh, some element which is in form of non-metals. So they are not able to mix with gold as well. And then we also have the f bot element, which uh, is uh, difficult to obtain from the, from the earth. And also they have uh, other uh, application. And here is the synthetic element. It can only exist in the laboratory. And also we have uh, some uh, metal, which is toxic. It's a hazardous to health. So we also not uh, prefer to put it into the metal. So end up, we will have only around 20 metal. We are able to put it into the gold to make it, to change the color and change the property of the gold. So mostly is the alloy in this, uh, uh, the metal in this uh, field group. They are able to mix well or to live well with the gold. So uh, another thing is the age hardening, which is a uh, really like a kind of uh, magic for jewelry. So if you have, uh, you're handling an alloy with very high hardness, yes, it's very high hardness, but when you make the jewelry, it will be very difficult. 
So if you can have an alloy, which is very soft when you, when you, when you work with it, but after you finish all your work, you can put it into the oven, just do some magic step, you can increase the hardness. It will be perfect for most of the manufacturer. And this is what the age hardening serving. So normally it can in, increase the hardness of the alloy by just a simple heat treatment uh, step. And then you, you can increase substantially the hardness. So uh, you can have an easy life when you do the stone setting and, and uh, cutting or polishing. But when after you finish all the works, you just put it in often, then the alloy will become hard. But how this can work? Uh, actually, uh, the principle is also very easy. Uh, for age hardening and another work is uh, it's a kind of um, precipitation hardening. That is, we uh, try to generate some very fine particle, which what we call the impurity phases, which is uh, evenly dispersed in the alloy. And then it can restrict the dislocation of uh, the um, uh, uh, metal. So it can increase the hardness. But unfortunately, not all the alloy can do this age hardening. Only if the alloy has some composition which have limited solubility. So if you can see from this uh, phase diagram, which it, we extract from uh, uh, aluminum alloy system. So actually it's, it's serving the same principle. So what we do is we have an alloy with uh, excessive uh, solute inside. And then we will heat it up, heat it up, and then we quench it. So it will reach its solid solution state, uh, uh, super saturation, and then we quench it in water. That means it generates a super saturated uh, state. And after that, you do a heat treatment. You increase the, the temperature a little bit to give some energy for the metal uh, atom. Uh, the solute atom to, to move themselves to their comfort zone. They feel uncomfortable when they are in this uh, super saturated state. So when you have temp uh, temperature, they, uh, some energy, then they will try to move back to form some, what we call the thermodynamically more stable state. They will, they will try to relax themselves. In this case, they will form another phase in the alloy. So uh, in a, then it will stop the, the uh, it will it will set a barrier to stop the dislocation. In another word, increase the, the hardness. So here is the the, the uh, sewing. Okay, first you have a super saturated solution, and then they start to form this uh, small particle. And if you let it uh, uh, develop, it will start to make it. Uh, the, uh, the precipitation larger and larger. So how we do this uh, uh, precipitation hardening? So first, like what I said, you increase the hardness, uh, you increase uh, the heat to make the homogeneous, the alloy homogeneous, and then you do a fast quenching to make a super saturated solar solution. And then you apply the heat again. Normally it's around 200, uh, around, 200 something to 300 for the gold or silver alloy. And then it will stand there for some time to let the um, alloy to aging or to, to, to precipitate out the second phase. And afterward, you will end up with a, a fine dispersion of a precipitation and the hardness increase. But if you keep, okay, if you, you keep heating it up, like this curve, you saw the hard change of the hardness. So if you just let it heat up, but if you don't stop it at right time, the, crisp, uh, the second phase will start to grow and grow and grow. So it will, what we call over aging. If it is over aging, they will form a, a lot of a very gross PPT. In this case, it will stop the, 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 the hardening. The, the hardness will, will decrease again. So we have to be, be very careful and to optimize the, the, the uh, heat treatment process. So here is a sample of a different uh, age hardened jewelry. So 
Here are some uh, example of the sterling silver from our stock. So uh, we have uh, two kinds of alloy, like this one. It has a, uh, uh, it's a copper base, a copper base sterling silver. Another one is uh, more the copper zinc base. So both of them can uh, increase the hardness. Uh, originally, it's around uh, the annual temperature is around uh, annual hardness is around sixty four or, or, or fifty seven. So after the age hardening, it can shoot up to uh, one hundred to one hundred twenty. So it's very effective. And uh, for the twenty two carat, unfortunately, that is low effect. So after the age hardening, the hardness is more or less the same because of uh, the, the, the uh, alloy uh, uh, composition itself. And besides, we also have uh, some yellow gold, which is uh, 18 karat uh, yellow. So you can see the original hardness, the annealed hardness is around 160 and it can shoot up by 100, up to 200 something, which is a very decent hardness for most of the application. And uh, you can see the white gold, the nickel white gold, the hardness, uh, the age hardening is not very effective. It can increase a little bit, but not very effective. And for uh, the, uh, uh, the paint gold, also the, the, the hardening effect is not very high in this case. But if you make the hardness, uh, make the um, uh, age hardening uh, temperature higher to around 400, then it will be completely another story. You are not making it age hardened, but you will generate the intermetallics, but it's another story. So when you go down the carriage, normally the, ha uh, the hardening effect is getting uh, less and less important. So here is some very important remark for age hardening. That is, when you do the hardening effect, uh, uh, after, whenever you heat it up, hit the uh, metal, up again, then this hardening effect will disappear. Because when you apply the heat, like when you do the soldering or assembling or for the, the, the jewelry, the heat will be dissolve this uh, uh, second phase into the solder solution again. So the hardening effect will disappear. So if you apply this uh, age hardening uh, process, it must be put in the last step after you do all the work. And then the last stage is the age hardening, okay? And secondly is if the alloy have very high zinc content, normally it will give low effect because the, the zinc oxide, uh, the, the, the zinc can help to dissolve the, the metal. So you are not easy to form different phases. Also, like what I said, the hardening effect can be optimized with proper heat treatment. So normally, um, you cannot just uh, randomly pick up a, temp a temperature or heating time or cooling method. So normally, the, it can be optimized and give you the most uh, 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 beneficial uh, hardness if you operate in the appropriate condition. This is very important. Okay. So, here is uh, the end of my presentation. But before we go to the Q&A session, I would like to thank uh, the following organization and company. Injury Technique uh, is our, uh, representing our master alloy in India. So uh, they, are, they are working very well with uh, the, um, the jewelry industry and they're quite well known in, in uh, India. So uh, thanks for the organizing this um, uh, webinar. And also uh, Choksi Harayas. Choksi Harayas is our sister company in India. And they are working, uh, they have been producing the master alloy in Udaipur since uh, 2008 until now. So they are a very important partner in India to, to um, work with uh, the, uh, the jewelry industry. Last but not the least is uh, that my big thank you goes to Jam Atlas. They are the online B2B platform, which 
uh, helping us to organize this uh, webinar. Without them, actually, we cannot uh, have this opportunity to uh, have to discuss the topic with you. Thank you very much. So uh, now I would like to go to the Q&A session and see if you have uh, any questions which you would like to ask. What is the best method of increasing metal hardness of uh, 22 karat gold? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, for 22 karat, the major problem is uh, the, the high gold content. Uh, it is uh, 916, it end up with only 8.4% of uh, the other metal you can play around with. So normally we have been trying different kind of uh, age hardening, it doesn't work. So uh, you are, if you uh, produce it by uh, hand making or machining purpose, and you can try to uh, make it hard by co-working, and then you release the stress, then you can have a higher hardness. This is, uh, should work better, but it doesn't apply to the uh, item which produced by casting. So if you produce it by casting, the only method that we can put in is to put in some uh, hardening element and not only one element, we have to put a, like a cocktail of element in order to generate multiple phases. In this case, it can substantially uh, increase the hardness to uh, the hardness to to quite some extent. Uh, but normally, uh, if for the very traditional twenty two carat, the hardness is around sixty something to seventy something. But with uh, this, uh, what we call the cocktail uh, alloy, uh, normally its hardness can up to over hundred. But this is the highest that we 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 can we can see. Uh, the second question is: uh, Can twenty two carat be a sharden? Uh, we have been trying different possibility, but until now, it's still not easy because uh, they are not able to form that uh, second phases for with many many um, alloy, uh, many different metals. By adding the silver, we'll make the alloy soft. So uh, normally, if you put more element, different element into the gold, it will just increase the capacity of uh, the alloy. Normally, it will generate more phases. The different phases will stop the dislocation. That means it can increase the hardness. So if you add only silver and gold, then uh, the silver will not affect too much. But if you add together silver with other things like copper, nickel, and, and a, 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 a different kind of uh, metal together, then it can, uh, instead of making it soft, it make it uh, hard, especially in uh, the white gold um, alloy. If you put the uh, nickel white gold, if you put in silver, the silver, instead of making it soft like the yellow gold, it in contrast, make it hard because the gold and uh, nickel, uh, the silver and nickel, they don't uh, dissolve in each other. It's just like oil and water. So uh, the uh, silver will, it will tend to decrease the solubility of the nickel. So it will form uh, a lot of uh, different phases and these different phases will make the alloy hard. So for the white gold, if you add silver, instead of making it soft, it will just make it hard. If we do not do the homogenization or step in a hardening process. Okay, so if we don't do the uh, homogeneous uh, step, that means we, if we don't do the annealing uh, uh, before we do this, uh, this uh, a hardening, because when you when you do whatever like the quote uh, like the if you do the casting or if you do the co-working, uh, normally the alloy has been this the crystal structure has been distorted, and uh, maybe maybe uh, the effect is not as good as uh, the if you do the homogenization to make it to form really the super saturated solution. 
if it is not super saturated, then you don't have this uh, precipitation. That means the uh, age hardening process will vary a lot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It will, you, will, you cannot have a very stable hardening effect. It, you, can, you can try. If you use uh, the alloy, which uh, done by casting, one is you, you quench it very fast in water and another one, you let it cool down slowly. You will end up somehow with a different degree of age hardening because of uh, the uh, homogeneous is not the same. And can we do a hardening directly after co-working? No, we cannot because uh, like what I said, uh, because the alloy is not in super saturated uh, form. Can we harden the alloy only by second step? Yes, we can do, but uh, as I mentioned, the result will not be very consistent. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It really depends on the the uh, casting, uh, like the quenching time that you had before. So normally to standardize it, we would prefer to have an alleling before it, it's better than you do it in as cast day or in cold, cold worst day. Um, for the cocktail that you suggest, I think that you are referring to the 22 carat. So normally uh, for the 22 carat, the major uh, element, that well, metal that we put in uh, traditionally is copper uh, and silver. So normally with these two uh, uh, together with gold, because the, of the good solubility among themselves, it will be very difficult to make it with uh, further hardness. So normally we will try to put a little bit uh, the metals with other uh, uh, lattice such a uh, or with uh, uh, which can induce a higher hardness, like the nickel or cobalt, they uh, they have a different uh, atomic size, so it can help to increase the, the, the hardness. At the same time, you can also put uh, the same in because the same uh, with uh, different lattice, so they will form uh, some different phases in between. So with this mixture uh, together with some uh, uh, other element then it can end up with uh, better hardness. So sometimes we get cracks in putting carrot white uh, while setting stone in prongs. So how we can harden the prong in their uh, ideal temperature for this. Okay, so for the cracking, it somehow is not due to it's too hard or it is uh, a, a lot that, uh, for sure, a crack is not that tall enough. But this fertility is not related only to hardness. Sometimes, uh, for, especially for white gold, because the white gold may contain quite a lot of uh, stain. If during the casting, if the stain is oxidized, it will form some kind of uh, oxide layer along the grain binary. So when you, when you bang the, the prong, then it will crack. So the cracking can also be due to the, the oxidation instead of uh, the alloy itself. So normally, uh, even you do the uh, heat, uh, heat treatment, it won't work because the uh, oxide is already lying uh, along the grain boundary. So uh, normally to avoid this kind of cracking, you have to be careful to avoid uh, too much oxidation and to make a proper spooling when you do the casting. I increase the alloy hardness by increasing the heat treatment time. Uh, as I saw from the curve, normally uh, if you keep on increasing the, the, temp, the, the time, then if uh, the second phase keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger, then it will just in contrast to reduce the hardness instead of uh, uh, increasing the hardness. So normally we have to optimize the treatment time and temperature. This is very important. Normally the supplier will suggest you the, 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 the right temperature and time and the right cooling method. You have to follow it uh, strictly. Liquid releasing is a big problem in European countries and banned beyond a certain level. What alternative can we use? Can sink be at? Actually the problem, if you add more sink, the same will make the problem even more serious. 
because the same can re, uh, increase the reactivity of the alloy because zinc is relatively quite reactive. So uh, you readily react with your sweat. So if the alloy contains more zinc, uh, we have two experiments before. You have uh, the alloy with same nickel content, but different zinc uh, content. The alloy with more zinc content will have a higher nickel release rate than the other one with a less zinc. It's because the zinc will increase the, the nickel releasing rate. So there are different ways to uh, uh, reduce the, the nickel releasing rate. It is in contrast by adding less zinc we replace the thing with uh, some other element in order to uh, increase uh, the inertness of the alloy. So it can, it can avoid the, the liquid with the thing. But of course, another way is uh, to, that's why, uh, uh, okay. Also that's why uh, normally for the liquid with rate, it works quite okay with the high carat uh, alloy like 18 carat or above. But when you go to 14 or below, it will become risky because the alloy containing less coal, the reactivity will increase. Okay, when hardening, how do you avoid uh, creating a pitchel alloy? So normally with the age hardening, uh, it will not create such brittleness. But in some cases, like for the paint gold, if you uh, increase the temperature too high, uh, if you remember in our last uh, uh, seminar, we talked about the pangol. So the phase diagram showing if for 18 carat, if the alloy reach the temperature of 410 degree, then the alloy start to form the intermetallics, which are kind of compound with a uh, quite ordered uh, uh, structure. So it provides you no uh, imperfection to the stop. To, to, to dislocate and it will become very brittle. So uh, normally it will, it will cause brittle, brittleness in, in the paint if you do the heat treatment for uh, paint gold. But for the others, uh, the brittleness somehow is due to the uh, oxidation. So please be uh, aware when you do the uh, age hardening, you have to do it in the inner atmosphere. That means the oven must be well protected with the inner gas or with uh, the cracked ammonia, so which can, can help to protect the alloy from oxidation. Can adding different elements increase the hardness? Sure, you can, you can add, but like what I, I mentioned, that elements have to be carefully uh, selected. So uh, normally, if the alloy with similar uh, uh, size, it won't give too much effect in hardening the alloy. Okay, and can fine gold jewelry be hardened by age hardening? No, the age hardening cannot work for gold because it doesn't form any kind of uh, super saturated solution because there is no solute inside. But uh, maybe you have heard about some kind of uh, what they call the uh, hard fine gold in China market. Uh, actually, this kind of gold is by adopt, uh, by adopt some uh, foreign particle inside. And then this foreign particle by uh, the hard, uh, the, the, the coal working on the surface. And like after the casting, you do some tumbling the tumbling will increase their hardness uh, a little bit. So, but by adopting some kind of uh, impurity, then the hardening curve will be more steep. That means you do the same degree of co-working, the hardness can increase a little bit more. So this is the way how they do the hardening of the fine gold, but it cannot uh, achieve by age hardening because they don't form this uh, second phase uh, alloy. So, how to increase the hardness of uh, the uh, platinum jewelry. So the platinum jewelry actually fall in the same principle that uh, you can do a harden by co-working. You can harden it by adding uh, different kinds of uh, element. Some element can, can harden it more and some less. So uh, like uh, the, the concept is the um, 
difference in uh, uh, the diameter, uh, the, the uh, atomic size. So normally uh, there are some uh, alloy which have very high hardness, like uh, the platinum, uh, gallium, indium alloy, which give very, very decent hardness of over 200. But of course, they may have uh, other, other side effects. But at the same time, because of they may form a different phase, this uh, platinum gallium alloy can do the uh, age hardening to make it uh, even harder. So the hardness is uh, up to over 200. So normally the uh, platinum alloy, the uh, hardness is uh, around, uh, it depends on the, the element. Normally the palladium, uh, platinum palladium is very soft. It has uh, the hardness of around 60 something. But uh, in contrast, if you put in rubidium or cobalt, you can end up the hardness up to 130. But if you're using the uh, copper gallium or pure gallium, then the hardness will go up to around uh, 160 or even up to 300 for, for some uh, extreme case. Can you please explain the harness test for gold, alloy, and silver? So actually, there are many uh, different kinds of uh, tarnishing tests for gold and silver alloy. But one of the most typical one is what we call the TAA test. That is to simulate the uh, environment uh, by adding some kind of um, bio uh, acet acetate, which is uh, not stable uh, in a, they put the, testing species in the chamber. And they put in uh, this kind of uh, 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 chemicals, which can liberate the uh, sulfur. And then they will, uh, they put the specimen inside and see how long the uh, alloy will start to go tarnish. The longer it can stand uh, this original color, that means the better the tarnish resistance. And normally for silver, uh, the uh, normal silver, will tarnish maybe within half an hour. But for the gold, uh, it can last for uh, 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 one day, two days. But normally, normally it, this will not give you any standard. It will it's just provide you a method for comparison. Okay, so there is no standard method that, uh, there is no uh, standard where you, okay, if it is more than one hour is bad, better or more than two hours is even better. So it's a kind of comparison with the, the similar alloy. Okay, this is one of the method. And of course, there are also some other uh, method like the uh, sweat uh, uh, sprain test. It can uh, test for also uh, the, the tarnish for different means. Yeah. What kind of atom can we add to increase the hardness of the nickel-free uh, white gold? So normally uh, the nickel-free white gold they have uh, either using the uh, palladium or there are also some white gold, which is uh, nickel palladium free. So if it is uh, the palladium alloy, normally the hardness is low, but uh, recently there are also some development uh, with the alloy containing uh, quite decent amount of uh, some uh, group free metal the indium or gallium, it can increase the hardness quite substantially. But of course, the, the alloy may also have uh, some other issue, like it's easy to crack because of the segregation of uh, these low melting alloys. But in fact, it can increase quite quite good the, the hardness. How about the purple color gold? Can we, uh, actually the purple gold is a kind of uh, intermetallics. It is a, an alloy formed between gold and aluminium. So around 80% of gold with 20% of aluminium. Then you can form a compound between these two elements. It is uh, purple in color, but it's brittle. It's a uh, lot like the ordinary alloys. It's just like a gemstone. So if you want to work with it, then you'll have to treat it like gemstone. It has very high hardness, but it's brittle. Okay, so um, then what is the 
methodological process for hardening 22 karat for lightweight and high strength jewelry. So uh, actually for 22 karat, uh, the most effective way that we can increase the hardness is either we do the cold working or we do the, uh, we use the alloy with uh, multiple elements. The more the element, the better the, the hardening. But even like that, the hardening is talking about around 100, 100 HV. So uh, difficult to make it more than that with uh, the decent color. Okay. To maintain the hardness in nine carat nickel free gold strip while rolling. So normally, uh, if you do the, do the co-working, uh, the alloy will be hardened. But if uh, you, once you do the annealing, the hardness will gone. It will disappear. So uh, you can uh, either you do a, a, a lower degree of uh, co-working to avoid the tarnish, or after the co-working, you put it in uh, the... Uh, lower temperature to release the stress. Then in, case, in this case, you can keep the hardness, but you can release the stress. Then the alloy will have a, a less tendency to go tarnish easily. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kopo, for sharing your valuable time and your expertise. And we would also like to thank the audience for such an active participation. And we hope that um, you're able to use this knowledge to the best of your expertise and your respective uh, professions. Um, if you have any further questions, you can email it at info at gematlas.com and we will forward the same to Dr. Koko. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you 